Welcome to my course on genome editing and engineering. Today we are going to discuss about module 9 where we will discuss about genome engineered disease models. In this module we will have discussions on cancer disease models, IPSC models and animal models. Let us start with uh, the animal uh, models which are quite uh, old and well known. Before that let us have a small discussion on uh, disease model. What is a disease model? Uh, as per this definition from nature portfolio, a disease model is an animal or cells displaying all or some of the pathological processes that are observed in the actual human or animal disease. Studying disease models aids understanding of how the disease develops and testing potential treatment uh, approaches. So, National Human Genome Research Institute has uh, defined animal disease models as below. An uh, animal model which may be mice, rat, gibraffes and others are non-human species but sufficiently like humans in their anatomy, physiology or response to a pathogen that can extrapolate the result of animal model studies to better understand human physiology and disease. They are used in medical research as they can mimic aspect of a disease found in humans. By using animal models, researchers can perform experiments that would be impractical or ethically prohibited uh, with humans. There are numerous uh, model organisms which have been developed and are now extensively used for studying basic biology and pathophysiology of human disease and development of novel therapeutics. Uh, in our lecture, we will try to discuss and understand some of the concepts in a good model design and its application and the theory underlying biological modeling and the process of producing a valuable and relevant animal model. Development of uh, model organisms has revolutionized our understanding of the mechanisms underlying normal development, adult homeostasis and uh, human disease. Many things today we know about gene function in model organisms and its applications to human has come from gene knockouts, knock-ins, mutations and artificially created SNPs, etc. And in this regard, the various genome editing technologies are very, very helpful. Now, question arises why do we need uh, animal disease models? As already told, uh, it is impractical and ethically not permissible to carry out experimentation uh, in humans. So, we have uh, to go for alternatives like animals, but we have to create a disease model in the animal uh, to further the experiments and also testing of drugs and therapeutics. Researchers can carry out experiments uh, as already discussed that would be impossible, in, impractical and ethically prohibited in humans. Uh, for example, to test the effect of drug before using it on humans, to study the safety and efficacy of some uh, treatment modalities like regenerative procedures and for understanding the causes, biology and prevention of uh, diseases. Uh, these animal models are good for understanding disease mechanisms and treatment and for overcoming the limitations of uh, clinical trials uh, that use human subjects. Numerous experimental animal models for diverse diseases have been successfully employed to screen new bioengineered chemical or herbal therapeutics that might have the potential for the treatment of uh, human patients. NCBI database reveals more than uh, 5 lakhs 50,000 studies uh, to be reported for use uh, of animal models for different uh, diseases. Now, what are the characteristics of a good animal uh, model? An ideal animal model for human disease research should possess certain characteristics as a prerequisite for a standard model as follows. A close relative or closely associated with the host tissue distribution disease progression and similar route of infection if not identical. Secondly, the disease course should be relatively shorter in the animal model for completing the 
efficacy test in reasonable time and facilitating rapid transition to human clinical uh, testing. There should be sufficient disease uh, correlation and pathological equivalence in the model animal despite the genomic differences with humans. Disease model animals should be easy to maintain uh, and work with. They should be readily available in adequate numbers uh, for certain statistical designs. And they should be relatively inexpensive and also free of regulatory constraints uh, to the maximum extent possible. But there will be certain regulatory uh, compliances uh, the researcher has to uh, follow and oblige. The most important thing is the animal models have to be uh, reproducible. Now, this is a uh, kind of a, a relation uh, you can see in the um, amongst the mammalia and you can see the various branches uh, here uh, and you have one important branch over here the primates under which you have hominidae uh, under which uh, you can find uh, homo sapiens. And so, these are their uh, close uh, relatives. Ideally, uh, these close relatives uh, would make the most ideal uh, animal uh, model. Uh, however, uh, there are certain uh, regulations which uh, many a times uh, prohibit the use of uh, certain uh, wild animals which may be endangered and other ethical uh, reasons. Uh, therefore, we have to go for uh, uh, animals which may be a little bit distantly uh, related uh, uh, to the human species. Uh, but there are other reasons uh, as well. Uh, uh, we have to be able to have uh, as already discussed in the earlier slides uh, these animals in uh, large numbers for uh, statistical analysis. And the ease of handling is also one of the important things. So, Theoretically, uh, every animal can be actually converted into a human uh, disease model, uh, but we uh, usually do not go for using each and every animal. We only select a few. Uh, those animals we will be discussing in some of the uh, future slides. For example, we can classify uh, the animal models into these main four groups, uh, rodents, then animals, uh, but it does not mean that rodent is not an animal. Here animal is a larger animal which is uh, bigger in size than the rodents uh, under which the mice, rats and hamsters uh, come. And in, in larger models, we animal models we use the pig, uh, sheep, uh, rabbits. Then we have non-human uh, primates like uh, baboon, uh, simpanji and uh, gorilla and uh, still uh, very unrelated or miscellaneous like apes, uh, horses and also in certain cases uh, we use uh, zebra fish. And this uh, list is uh, not limited, uh, there are many other animals you may find uh, uh, people uh, using. Uh, this is just to give you an idea about the classification of the animal models that we use for uh, drug discovery or understanding certain molecular uh, mechanisms. So, we have already discussed about the possibility of using uh, large animals, but uh, these difficult uh, animals are difficult to maintain and also economically uh, very, very expensive uh, handling these uh, big size uh, animal. And in uh, from the scientific point of view, uh, one of the major disadvantages is that most human disease cannot be replicated in many of the uh, animal models, uh, whether uh, small and uh, big. The European Commission uh, considered that uh, mice appears to be the most common genetically engineered animal model to study new drug development for different diseases uh, for numerous uh, reasons such as uh, they are, uh, they are the mice genome is similar to the human genome. Uh, a good genetic molecular toolbox is available and the animal's small size facilitates large scale high throughput studies making it a cost efficient uh, model. Therefore, its potentials for making medical research and in particular drug development more efficient could be increased by solving a range of uh, identified uh, bottlenecks. Mouse models have been uh, successfully used to validate drug targets 
and to determine efficacious and safe doses schemes for combination treatments in uh, humans. Uh, these uh, cases have one factor in common, they do not aim to fully model a disease or disease mechanism, but rather set out to obtain a specific functional uh, information. Uh, we know that uh, human, mouse and other mammals uh, have evolved from a common ancestor largely approximately around 80 million years ago. Therefore, their genomes share similarities uh, to uh, a large extent. In particular, the coding regions in the DNA are evolutionarily conserved as they are required for function and survival. Overall, some genes are as high as 99 percent identical while others are low in their uh, similarity. On an average, the protein coding genes of mouse and humans are around 85 percent identical. Uh, in contrast, the non-coding regions share much uh, less similarity, uh, less than 50 percent and recent findings suggest conservation in the regulatory sequences as well, but it is not of interest to us for uh, this particular uh, discussion. Potentially any mammal having high genomic similarity with human are ideal to be developed into disease animal models. Uh, however, the mouse prevails as an animal of choice due to its measured advantages and well established experimental uh, method. Uh, human autologs are easily found in the mouse uh, sequence uh, whose function can be readily tested. Thus, researchers can mimic the effect of DNA alterations that occur in human diseases and conveniently study the consequences in mice. Another animal of uh, choice is the rat. Uh, we have uh, a rat uh, genome database which you can access in the website rgd.mcw.edu uh, slash uh, wz and uh, this RGD was established in uh, 1999 and soon it became a premier site for genetic, genomic, phenotype and disease related data generated from uh, rat research. RGD has expanded to include a large body of structured and standardized data for other species uh, including mouse, a human, cincilla, bonobo, a squirrel, dog, pig, monkey, barbet and uh, mole rat. And much of this data uh, is the result of uh, manual curation work by RZD curators. In other instances, uh, it has been imported into RZD from other databases uh, through custom extract, load and transform pipelines, giving RZD users integrated access to a wide variety of data to support uh, their research. And you can see here the pictorial representation of the various RZD species or the species about which the genetic, genomic, phenotypic and disease related uh, data are available in this uh, database. So, uh, you can see here uh, the web page of uh, this uh, RGD and if you go to the disease menu, uh, you can see a lot of information uh, regarding uh, various diseases like age related cancer, cardiovascular, even uh, COVID-19. Uh, data is now uh, available including others like diabetes, liver disease, neurology, respiratory and uh, so on. And you have many phenotypes and uh, models uh, also in these uh, database and if you uh, go into the drop down menu, you can see uh, genetic models, autism models, then phenotypes and uh, uh, even you can find out uh, models by uh, typing uh, the model you are looking for and this is a new feature uh, in this uh, website. So, when you go to find uh, new models, uh, you can see here, uh, you can uh, have to enter a disease or phenotype or strain condition to find a, a rat model over here. And for example, I just uh, type here the three letters di, D I A dia. So, you, I have options in the drop down menu for many things like diarrhea, uh, diabetes, diastolic dysfunction and so on. And these uh, you can uh, scroll down this uh, drop down menu and you can find out the various disease conditions for which you have 
information regarding phenotype, strain or condition uh, in, the, in the rat uh, models. Other models which are becoming popular are the pig disease model or uh, porcine uh, disease uh, model and you can identify here a very, a very famous uh, personality uh, Craig uh, Venter uh, who is now trying to uh, develop uh, humanized uh, pigs uh, because it has lot of uh, applications in uh, diabetes, uh, Parkinson's and uh, even uh, tissue engineering and diseases of the heart, kidney, liver, uh, small bubble and lungs. So, here uh, one of the aim here is to uh, develop these uh, various organs and try to make them compatible with the human organs. So, uh, in, the, in this regard a lot of uh, genome editing work is being carried out to make those uh, gene sets in a particular uh, tissue or organ uh, very, very similar to a human. So, that is the frontier area of research as regards uh, animal models and animal uh, disease models. Uh, apart from uh, the ones who are understanding diseases and finding out therapeutics, the tissue engineering and organ engineering is now becoming a very, very important uh, area of focus. Let us get back to the main discussion of animal models. Uh, the most commonly used small animal cancer models are mice, uh, but these are uh, having several uh, drawbacks uh, such as a typical human is 3000 times larger than a mouse and live 30 to 50 times longer and therefore undergo about 105 more cell divisions in a lifetime. Mice develop cancers of mainly mesenchymal origin uh, such as sarcomas and lymphomas even without genetic modification whereas with age humans have a bias towards the development of uh, epithelial cancers. Uh, due to the small size and short lifespan of mice, loss of certain tumor suppressor genes is insufficient to result in the development of cancer in a highly penetrant manner particularly when such mutations are heterozygous. So, when we are using uh, mice models, uh, we have to be uh, careful uh, in the uh, data handling and data processing and their uh, interpretation with respect to uh, the human uh, diseases. Uh, this is uh, a uh, comparison of the uh, complete human uh, sequence, uh, uh, human genome sequence uh, completed in 2012. So, uh, uh, prior to earlier reports the DNA bases have increased by 4.5 percent uh, from 2.92 billion to 3.0 billion uh, bec of, uh, because of the advances in uh, and, and the trust in the uh, sequencing uh, work. And the count of uh, protein coding genes of course has not uh, increased much, it is uh, hovering uh, nearly around uh, 20,000. Uh, this is the summary of the uh, similar uh, uh, statistics on mouse genome uh, and, and a comparison between uh, the human and the mouse. Uh, so, you have the uh, total number of genes and uh, genome features uh, here uh, it has increased from 49 to uh, say 50,000. Uh, what is important uh, for us to understand is the number of mouse genes with human orthologs uh, something roughly around uh, 17,000. Uh, 98. And then uh, the number of mouse model genotypes associated with human disease uh, has uh, increased in the last uh, 2 years from 6374 to 6900 by around uh, roughly around uh, 600 uh, numbers. So, uh, we can see the trust of using uh, mouse models uh, for developing uh, human diseases. So, this turns out to be roughly around uh, um, 300 uh, per uh, year. We can divide uh, animal models of disease into uh, two categories and the number one is the spontaneous disease models and the second one is the uh, induced uh, disease models. 
Uh, in vivo studies focus on both induced and spontaneous models of disease in small animals and are more restrictive in uh, large animals. The implementation of induced models has uh, gained a lot of attention uh, due to ease and availability of various protocols and techniques which deploy physical, chemical uh, stimulus to induce a desired uh, disease. In induced uh, disease models, instruction can occur by physical, chemical and biological agents. Uh, sometimes physical stimuli such as light uh, and chemical stimuli uh, uh, can act together to develop an animal uh, disease uh, model. One of the most uh, common method for inducing uh, uh, cancer is to use microsurgical techniques from cell suspension injection to tumor uh, tissue en engraftment. The most efficient strategy is to exploit genetic engineering to develop genetically programmed uh, cancer models. Uh, depending on uh, the cancer particularities, some protocols involve the use of a combination of physical and chemical factors to induce cancer in uh, laboratory animals. Let us discuss about some of the widely used methods for generation of uh, transgenic mice and uh, many of these uh, can be used for generation of uh, disease uh, models. Uh, number A is the spontaneous uh, mutation. You can he see here the normal type and due to a spontaneous mutation, we get a, a pathological uh, phenotype for example and uh, as a result of the breeding and inbreeding, we may get uh, a normal colony and we may, we may get a, uh, a mutant litter or a mutant colony. So, these uh, spontaneous mutations uh, as the name suggests appear spontaneously in mice colonies after successive breeding events and are usually detected when associated with a, a phenotypic uh, change. The analysis of the genetic background of spontaneously mutated mice can be associated with events encountered in human pathologies and further used as models of uh, specific uh, diseases. The second case is about chemical or radiation induced uh, mutations. So, we are using here either radiation or some chemical mutations which uh, induce uh, mutations and results in a mutant uh, phenotype. Here genetic modifications are based on the exposure of the mice to mutagens uh, like say ethyl nitrosourea and there are many more such agents and this can be used for large scale program of uh, mutagenesis and establishment of specific genetic alteration patterns responsible for human uh, disease. Uh, this is a widely used method for generation of uh, transgenic mice. Uh, number 3 is uh, retroviral infection. Uh, this method is one of the first partially controlled protocols for generation of transgenic mice and is based on the transfection of pre-implantation embryos with a retrovirus that contains the gene to be replaced or modified. The modified embryos are implanted into recipient females and analyzed for the presence or absence of the genetic modifications in concordance with the uh, developed phenotype. And we can use these uh, very easily uh, for uh, genome editing using the three known technologies that we have discussed, uh, ZFN, TALEN and uh, CRISPR-Cas9. So here as you can see in this figure, there is a uh, donor female from which the embryo is taken and uh, it is uh, uh, infected with a retrovirus which is having a transgene and then it is re-implanted back uh, into a uh, 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 mother and then we get offsprings with or uh, without uh, transients. In this case, they have experimented with a human uh, beta uh, globin gene. The fourth type of uh, manipulation is through micro injection of uh, DNA constructs and uh, as you can see here, a donor female and this is a one cell egg and uh, the injection of the construct with transin is uh, done here and is implement implanted into the female which uh, results in offsprings with or uh, without uh, transin. So, this is uh, with the transin uh, shown here uh, schematically. So, uh, as already discussed, this system comprises of direct injection of DNA constructs into one cell fertilized embryos followed by 
transfer in recipient females and analysis of the presence or absence of the genetic modification uh, as shown here uh, in, in, in the uh, picture. Uh, let us now uh, discuss in brief about strategies for precise laboratory animal models uh, for mimicking human uh, diseases. Precise genome editing harnesses the power of uh, homology directed repair uh, which can be uh, used in uh, multiple uh, species. Uh, HDR is effective in creating animal models mimicking disease associated single nucleotide uh, polymorphisms in, in diverse uh, animal species. Considering the future use of engineered endonucleases as a drug for uh, gene therapy, sequence humanized animal models will be produced and may be an essential system for preclinical studies evaluating drug safety and effectiveness in the future. In knocking strategy uh, CRISPR Cas9 is used and it is dependent on the co-injection of uh, CRISPR Cas9 components with double stranded DNA or single stranded uh, oligonucleotides as templates. The single stranded oligonucleotide mediated knocking in mammalian cells occur through the homology directed repair mechanism and has been found to be more efficient than using the double stranded donor plasmids. The utilization of these platform enables the insertion, uh, deletion or replacement of genetic materials of interest uh, into the genome. There are many uh, small molecules uh, for example, RAD51 uh, stimulatory compound 1, RS1 or SCR1 which enhances the HDR pathway or inhibit the uh, non homology and joining pathway. Uh, when coupled with CRISPR Cas9 system, uh, these compounds increase the HDR efficiency in mammalian cells, mice, and uh, rabbits. However, difficulties remain with the knock in strategy in cell lines and animals due to the low homology directed repair frequency, which remains to be optimized for attaining higher uh, efficiency. In the ongoing effort for higher efficiency in modeling uh, SNPs, uh, it was recently revealed that RNA guided deaminases including adenine based editors and cytosine based editors composed of an engineered deaminase and a catalytically impaired castine variant can introduce a single base conversion A to T or G to C or vice versa at a target site without double strand breaks enabling efficient programmable uh, base editing. Uh, you have uh, already learnt about the various uh, dead Cas9s uh, which are being uh, converted into uh, base editors uh, in, in earlier uh, lectures. Among these uh, newly designed chimeric uh, nucleases, uh, base editor 3 or BE3 uh, was successfully adopted in generating mice with point mutation at the target site with high efficiency, however its application in other laboratory animals are uh, yet to be uh, elucidated. Uh, you are familiar with this uh, CRISPR Cas system. Uh, let us uh, not spend time in discussing about the various uh, components, uh, the CRISPR RNA, tracer RNA and the Cas9 nucleus and the joining of these two components uh, through a linker to generate the single guide uh, RNA. And we know the ZRNA base pairs with the DNA target and we can program it to target an 18 to 25 uh, base pair sequence of interest. And we know about the importance of the uh, pump sequences having the NGG uh, signature and the role of Cas9 uh, which is the nucleus and also uh, apart from uh, being a uh, uh, cutter, the modified uh, Cas9 uh, can be converted into uh, other applications like transforming it into a, a best editor and so on. Overall, the advent of targeted nucleases has made it possible to carry out uh, genetic mutations of almost all species on earth ranging from microbes to plants to animals and these novel tools can bypass the limitations of uh, previous uh, techniques which was amenable to a narrow species window and allows precision nucleotide modification of the genome with high efficiency, speed and economy.
using targeted nucleases combined with homologous recombination. Today, it is possible to precisely tailor the genome, creating models of human diseases and conditions directly and efficiently in zygotes derived from any uh, mouse or animal strain. Combined uh, approaches make it possible to sequentially and progressively refine these models to better reflect human disease, test and uh, develop uh, therapeutics. Uh, in this regard, uh, we need to mention that uh, GebraFeast is the first vertebrate model uh, used to demonstrate that CRISPR-Cas9 can efficiently edit the genome in vivo with up to uh, 50 percent uh, target efficiency wh which is uh, uh, quite high. So, this is a brief overview of the genome editing for development of animal models of uh, human diseases. A common process of generating animal models of human diseases through genome editing uh, uses uh, fertilized one cell stage uh, embryos. The CRISPR system uh, in conjunction with various methods uh, like uh, uh, microinjection, electroporation is used extensively for producing animal models using uh, fertilized uh, embryos. Uh, microinjection is a method of injecting the Cas9 gRNA complex directly into the cytoplasm of pronucleus of fertilized one cell uh, embryos, uh, while electroporation enables gene editing by inducing electric uh, stimulation in the presence of Cas9 gRNA complex uh, to fertilized uh, one cell uh, embryos. With this, we come to an end of uh, part A of animal uh, models. We will continue our lecture uh, in part B uh, of this uh, module. Thank you. Mm -hmm.